This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by American Helix. The American Helix is a revolutionary new concept in smoking technology. Based on Brunoli's principle, the shape of the pipe creates a venturi effect, causing a swirling motion of the smoke through precision micro holes that are produced for the intake system. This results in a slower burn that conserves tobacco and gives a smooth, refreshing smoke, making the Helix the smoothest hitting pipe on the market. For further info or to locate their products, you can find them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash SS Helix or contact them. Signature Helix at gmail.com. That's Signature Helix at gmail.com. This episode is also brought to you by Mountain Glass Arts. For the month of May, Mountain Glass is offering their borosilicate sale, shot rod and tube at 40% off. Just use their word shot at checkout. That's S C H O T T. And for all you soft glass nerds, they're having our COE 104 sale, a Fetre rod at 30% off. Just put in the code a Fetre at checkout, and that's E-F-F-E-T-R-E at checkout, and that's also at mountainglass.com. Just go to mountainglass.com. This is the Wise Guy Radio Show, a podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. We will be dissecting their journeys in hopes to deliver actionable content that you, the artist, can start implementing now, helping you grow not only as a creative spirit, but also a successful artistic entrepreneur. With a little organization, relationship building, and your artistic ability, you can obtain greatness. Climb aboard, whether an artist, retail owner, or enthusiast. We have a ton of fun in store for you. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 103. This is Jay Michael, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in today. With 17 years of experience behind the torch, I am as excited as always to bring you conversations with artists, sharing their stories and hopes to inspire and entertain while helping you grow your business. And today is no exception. Today we are going to be discussing your emergency fund and why I feel and lots of other folks out there in the world of business think it is imperative for you to have an emergency fund for your business. Now, before this discussion begins, I want to just back up and let you guys know that if you have not yet listened to uh, the episode I did on how to really calculate your uh, salary and your base pay for yourself, uh, just go back to episode 84, and it's all about setting up baseline costs for what things actually truly cost you in your studio, which you can then figure out uh, how much you're able to pay yourself because as it is in business, uh, your business is paid first, and then your business pays you. So if you think about your business as being the entity and you are the heart and soul of the business that gets paid, uh, your business needs to get paid first. And that episode in 84 really covered the nitty gritty of how to go around and do baseline calculations on everything so you can figure out basically how much it costs you down to the hour to work in your studio, uh, covering everything from your, your space, your rent, your uh, power, electricity, same thing. Uh, your Wi-Fi, if you have that, like all the little nitty-ditty ditty details you have in your studio. And by doing that and figuring those costs out, then you're able to pay your business what the business cost to run. And then you can see what kind of profits you have left over, which you then pay yourself. Because if you can't calculate these numbers and you don't know whether or not your business is making a profit, then you actually don't even know if you have a business. Because if you are not making a profit at all, all you are doing is having a expensive hobby that you're doing. And those hobbies uh, that can be turned into businesses if you do it right. So, again, uh, this is for those of you who are either getting started or, I mean, really, this is for anybody, and this could pertain to any business in general, but this is specifically niched down for all of us in the glass world and also as artists in general, specifically glass artists. Um, but, again, the, the having the emergency fund for your personal life to make sure that if you get injured or sick or some kind of crazy shit happens, that you have at least 90 days of an emergency fund set up in your bank, um, you know, just covering your electricity, your rent, your mortgage, whatever you have, your car payments if you have them, student loans, all of the fucking bills you have. Hopefully you've sat down and created a budget for yourself so you know how much your monthly costs are to live. And then also by having that calculation, then you can figure out how much you need to pay yourself weekly. And that if you can't pay yourself what you're supposed to pay yourself because you're paying your business a certain amount of money that it needs to run and then you need to pay yourself a certain money you need to run, you got to figure out how to increase your profits and increase the margins in your business. So by doing all of these calculations over a period of time, then you will have a strong, solid foundation for your financial house, business, and personal, which relieves a shit ton of stress. 
And these are principles that I have known somewhat for the probably the past 10 years. And honestly, uh, really in the past maybe three years or so, really been implementing them. Uh, and I'm going to be transparent with you all. I, this is stuff that I'm, again, learning as I'm going through this process. And a lot of times I get these little wake-up calls from some dumb shit goes down that I'm like, holy crap, what the fuck? And then uh, makes me aware that these are changes in my life I have to make. And then that's when I pass them on to you guys. Uh, in hopes that you learn from lessons I've learned, or I can also share things with you as I'm growing, and we all grow together. And again, the goal with this show is to help to educate not only in business, but also safety and all the other shit. But really the whole heart and soul of what I like to do with this is to help you become a better human being, period, uh, by creating good habits, creating a mental space that you like to work in, making sure your studios are clean and efficient. You know, everything is all the stuff we kind of go over, as long as also sharing the stories of artists and their trials and tribulations. So if this is your first episode tuning in, thank you so much for joining us here. I hope you guys do enjoy it. This is 103. So I have a whole backlog now of all kind of fun episodes to go over. And uh, just kind of a side note too, the website I've been busting my ass on, uh, spent a couple days over the past week working on it just specifically on the website. And I am first finally got the pilot episode up uh, as an actual page. And now I have 103 other pages to create, so uh, it's going to be a fun time. But again, I have my uh, my old web guy back on board with me, so he's going to be helping me uh, catch up on the Slack and what have you. But I am excited. Um, I have seen those of all you new subscribers on the website. Thank you for subscribing. All you have to do is just go to wiseguymedia.com. If you have not subscribed yet, you'll get a little pop-up that'll come in there. Just throw your email in, and that'll keep you up to date with the show. Uh, as well as uh, some ebooks and stuff I'm putting together, you'll get uh, notices for and how you can go about getting those. And they're all going to be free for you all to download. Um, as well as also now that I am collaborating with The Flow magazine, uh, we are going to be putting this series in their magazine as well as some other editorial stuff I'm going to be doing with them uh, in their quarterly magazine they put out, which is super awesome. And if you guys have not, again, yet subscribed to The Flow magazine, what the hell are you waiting for? Just go to theflowmagazine.com and go there and get your subscription. Again, it's a quarterly magazine where you get insights and information from the best people in this industry, period. So go check them out. It's uh, theflowmagazine.com. And now I think it's time for us to get on with the show. And just one more thing. If you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, please, please, please contact me. Even just to reach out and say, hey, uh, info at wiseguyradio.com. Info at W-Y-Z-G-U-Y radio.com. And uh, I'd like to get back to you guys and talk and communicate and just kind of get some insights and some feedback from everybody. So I do appreciate all the love and feedback I have gotten. And also, don't forget, uh, my interview with Mike Souza is coming up in a week from now. We are going to be talking about the symposium coming up out in Tucson for the scientific glassblowers, as well as him and I are going to be doing a debunk, defunk uh, kind of show where we're going to be talking about the glass world and all of the fun little myths that are going out there. And we're going to be busting some myths. Well, at least Mike's going to be because he is the Einstein of glass. So anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoy this segment. Again, we are going to be talking about your emergency fund for your business. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Let's get into the talk of an emergency fund for your business. Be right back. talking about an emergency fund and what I find is a simple system to set up for yourself to make this happen. Um, I'm not going to be too talky-talky about this because this can be some boring bullshit if it doesn't, uh, you know, if you're not interested in this kind of stuff, which I hope you are at least the first time around. Because then again, once you get the system and snowball rolling, uh, you can sit back and watch your profits increase and have an emergency fund and not have to stress out. And all of this was honestly, this week was brought to my attention um, as a topic that I've been wanting to cover. It's just now pushing me to talk about it this week. Uh, was because one of my local glass artist friends injured themselves um, and was freaking out and was uh, just kind of asking around uh, what to do. And my answer, honestly, and I felt kind of uh, harsh by putting this as my answer to the reply, but basically I said, uh, this is one reason why we all need an emergency fund. Because this person injured herself uh, by walking their dog. And you never know what kind of stupid shit's going to happen. Uh, you might trip over your shoelaces. You may burn yourself really bad. I mean, you just never know. So this is, again, this is so important on why. So, uh, you know, if the body is injured, it's unable to perform at its highest ability, hindering the artist, yourself, from being productive and also losing the ability to create your income. And has this ever happened to you? Have you ever cut yourself or burnt yourself so bad that you're unable to use your hands for more than one day? Well, oh shit, I'll tell you, I have. 
About 10 years ago, while working late one night, the tubing that I was laying some color stringers inside of cracked, fell apart, and exposed my left hand to the torch. The flame made a direct hit to my nail beds on that side of my hand and actually put me out of work for more than a month. At that point in time, I was right in the middle of making a commissioned chandelier piece and had a nice deposit on this, which actually was somewhat luck and also good timing on my side because it was really the only way I was able to survive and pay my bills. And had that not happened, had I not had this uh, little bit of money put away from this deposit, I would have been fucked, like completely fucked. Um, just because not only, again, would I not be able to work, but people, my rent space, I would have, I'd have been pissing people off and nobody's going to wait around for you to pay them. People don't want to wait around. So this brings us to the importance of the emergency fund. The emergency fund isn't just for your business to survive. It's also to help continuing to pay yourself while you're out of work. That being said, if, you're all, if you already have a personal emergency fund, that this doesn't necessarily pertain to you. If you have a personal emergency fund of at least three months of expenses, which covers your food, water, shelter, etc., then you are golden and can relax and actually heal faster. If not, then what do you do? One can be resourceful, and this episode isn't about solving that problem of being resourceful. This is about being proactive and setting aside an emergency fund for your business. So hopefully by now you've gone through the process of determining how much you should pay yourself either daily, weekly, or bi-weekly. And again, that was if you go back to episode 84 is where I had a full breakdown on fine-tuning your baseline productivity costs so then you can figure out what kind of salary you need to pay yourself. So go back and listen to 84 if you have not listened to that one yet. Um, and there's also some worksheets and stuff attached to that one that will help you out calculate those particular numbers. But again, if so, if you have uh, the ability to pay yourself on these time schedules and you have set the amount you need to earn in order to pay all your personal stuff, which should only come from the profits of the business. The worst thing you can do is to get yourself in the habit of selling an order, say, for 500 bucks, and then automatically assuming that you just made $500. Stop lying to yourself. You didn't just make $500. Your business made $500, and now you have to pay the business first. Again, your business is the entity. You are the heart and soul. And here's a good system and habit to get yourself into to keep this ball rolling. Now, say again, you get paid $500, okay? Make sell your order. The first thing you need to do is separate the appropriate amounts needed to ensure that you are covering the material costs and daily costs to run your business as well. Your power, water, cable, Wi-Fi, etc. If you are a home-based business, you should still treat the space as its own entity, which comes in handy as a tax benefit towards the end of the year. Rough estimates in your home are okay at first. Um, I was figuring out in my home, it was costing me roughly around 75 bucks a month in power alone to work here. Now, I knew my gas cost because it was consistent. But if you're trying to figure out this, what your power bill costs in your house, I figure an average kiln costs about 30 bucks to 40 bucks a month to run. And we did some experimentations. My kiln's a 110. Big ass aim is still a 110. It should be a 220, but it's a 110. But still, uh, just ways to calculate your home costs. So once you have figured out, once you have figured that out, you're, uh, let me start this over. So once you have figured that out, your leftovers are, once, I, once you have figured out what your leftovers are, it is your net, which is also your profit. So uh, for example, and this is how I, where I break it down for you. So here's your examples. So you made a $500 sale. You figured that it cost you in materials and gas and glass to uh, uh, produce that. It cost $150 to produce that $500 order. It might seem kind of high, but you'd be amazed by what it costs when you actually break it down. Now, then you figure out what the power costs because you need to calculate these things separately, even though it's included in what it costs to make this product. So now you have your $150 to produce a material cost, which I added in the gases and the glass. Your power bill is roughly, say, mine's about five bucks a day, and it took you three days to produce this order. There's $15 right there in your power bill. And then figure you have some other miscellaneous bills. Again, you have your Wi-Fi, you have your water bill maybe, you maybe have other things going on that you were paying for. And you break those down to the day, and now you have an extra $10 a day. So now you have a $30 extra because, again, this took you three days to produce. So you have $150 in what it costs in material costs. You have $15 in your power bill. And then you have about $30 bucks estimated roughly for other miscellaneous bullshit bills. Altogether, that's $195 it costs you to make that sale of $500. You do your math, subtract your numbers, and now your business has a profit of $305 which is fucking awesome. So now you got to figure out how to go about paying yourself and also how are you going to pay your emergency fund. So now you have, that, that's just the basic breakdown of that order. 
Now we're going to get into what you can do to calculate your weekly costs because that's not going to probably be your only order. So another example now I have is that if you were to pull out a specific percentage amount of weekly profits for pay, it would leave you with, say, 75% of your, that profit towards your salary, and the other 25% could go towards retained earnings or your emergency fund or both. So now we're going to go into what, how and you would go about doing this. So now each week, say your profits, after all your base costs that you've already calculated, your profits are $1,000. Okay, So each week you're making about a $1,000 profit. Now you take 75% out of that of that $1000 which is your salary that's now $750 a week you're going to pay yourself. Now when you figure out that 750 now you need to figure out your taxes which I'm going to say 20% just as a big ass high number it sounds high some say 15% but I'm going to say 20%. Take 20% out of that 750 and put it into a savings account. That way you can do quarterly estimates and pay quarterly taxes and then at the end of the year if you've overpaid you'll get a refund. The goal is to not overpay, but if you overpay, it's better than underpaying. Because then, at the end of the year, if you underpay, you got a tax bill you got to pay. Better to get a refund than to have to pay. Eventually, you can figure out your averages, and you'll get almost to a point to where you're not doing either paying or receiving. So, which is good. Now, once you have this 75% taken out of your profits, it leaves you with 25% of that thousand dollars, which is 250 bucks. Now, this becomes your retained earnings. Now you take this money and now you divide this into percentages for your retained earnings for future purchases and then retained earnings for your emergency fund. And here's how you go about doing this, okay? So you have 250 bucks left over. 10% of 250 is roughly $62. Now that 62 bucks every week you put that away for future purchases for a new kiln or whatever. And then the 75% of the 250 is roughly $188 that you put away for your emergency fund. Now, when you do that, if you do your numbers correctly, in six weeks, literally in six weeks, you will have your estimated three-month emergency fund. Now, here we go now is where we need to calculate your emergency fund to kind of back up a little bit. Because your emergency fund is all based on what it costs for you to run your studio. This isn't for you to be in there actually producing the glass. This is actually to have your lights on, to have your water running, to have your Wi-Fi working. So just because you can't say work on your torch, you can still go to your studio and you can do business stuff. You can use the phone, make phone calls, get orders in, you know, that kind of stuff. Make your time count. And if you have your emergency fund established, it's going to make this way, way easier to do. So now how we're going to get into how do you calculate your emergency fund? First, we got into how do you calculate what you're paying yourself and how do you actually go about percentages with breaking down your profits to then uh, allocate those into your certain savings. Now we get into how do you figure out your emergency fund. And again, if you refer back to episode 84, I really broke down uh, roughly uh, the estimates for daily and hour, even down to the hour of how much it costs you per hour to work in your studio. It's, it's really easy to do if you just follow the system. So now we're going to figure out the emergency fund. So now this is three months of expenses. Okay, so I am figuring out that uh, on a monthly basis, you have $150 for your power bill, your water bill, if you have one, say 30 bucks, and then your cable or Wi-Fi or whatever is roughly 30. Then you have your tank of oxygen. Now, this depends on what your studio setup is like. So I've done two different calculations, but for the uh, sake and purposes of the show today, I'm just going to be doing the liquid oxygen one. It's a little bit higher number, but it still gives you the idea on how to do this. So again, now I have got my, I've had my expenses, my power, water, cable, Wi-Fi. That's 150 for power, 30 bucks for the water, and 30 bucks for cable Wi-Fi, which is a miscellaneous bullshit. Your liquid oxygen, roughly 150 bucks a month. Your propane, I would say at least two minimum you're going to save in your emergency fund, which is going to be, say, 40 bucks. Now, that's also a high number for propane, but again, there you go. So now, that's basically 400 bucks a month. And that's just, again, for you just to keep everything on and full in your studio for that month. So $400 a month is what it roughly is going to cost you just as a bare bones minimum to work in your studio. Times that by three, now you have $1,200. If you can put $1,200 away in your bank and your savings account as the emergency fund and don't touch it, then you're golden. So now you go back and you break that down based on the initial numbers that we first calculated. And again, remember, I took it down as a basic number of $1,000 a week. So you're paying yourself 75% of that $1,000, which is $750 for your paycheck. Take out your 20% for taxes, and you're good to go. 
Now you go into your retained earnings, which was the other 25% of the $1,000, which leaves you with 250 bucks a week. You're putting away 10% of that, which is $62 for retained earnings for kilns, torches, etc. 75% of the 250 is 188 for your emergency fund. And if you do the math, it's going to take you around six weeks. If you make the same amount of money, six weeks is going to cost cause you time-wise at $188 a week, it's gonna say you'll be able to save eleven hundred and twenty eight bucks. So do it for seven weeks and just do your math. You're gonna add, add that to that, you're gonna have fifteen hundred bucks. So and fifteen hundred dollars is, is a higher number than you need in your emergency fund, but you never know. So say seven weeks and you you know, whatever. Whatever you gotta do to break it down. This is how it works. And it's a really simple concept. Again, it's just figuring out percentages or what your initial bills are. But if you do all the math on paper first and really put it out in front of you and see it, you're going to see that you can really, really do this. The only thing is that you won't do this if you continually go sell an order and then you immediately go to the grocery store, you immediately go hit McDonald's, you immediately go to your best friend to, uh, you know, whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying. You have got to make sure that when you get money in from an order that that money goes to your bank or however you go about allocating your funds to savings to checking to whatever you got to have it set up and again remember going back to the bank uh, uh, show I did talking about setting up checking accounts you need a checking account for your personal b bills you need a savings account for your personal bills you need a checking account for your business and a savings account for the business sometimes you could have two savings account for the business one of the savings accounts is your taxes the other one is retained earnings like we talked about with this other percentage that you're taking out your 10% of your weekly uh, retained earnings so I hope this helps you guys out. But again, you need to make sure that you have a three-month emergency fund plus money saved for a new kiln, torches, etc. If you're paying the business first, you will now have the ability to create savings for yourself, which will not only be able to purchase your next round of supplies because when you pay the business first, you're paying back the business for those supplies that you used. And then you won't be stressing and wondering where you'll get your next sale from, which will then allow you to heal faster and get your ass back on the torch. So be proactive, and when the shit hits the fan, you will be prepared. Hope this helps, guys. And again, there'll be a PDF link to a Dropbox folder where you can go on there and download all these files. And at some point here in the near future, I'll have all this information, including all the PDF links on the uh, page on the show or on the website that says resources. Um, I'm going to have everything on there from our lawyer's form that we had printed out, as well as all the PDF forms that we have on the Dropbox for you guys. So once again... Think about the future, think about today, think about everything. Have an emergency fund set up for yourself, at least three months of bills set aside so that if you get hurt, you can still keep your house lit, your food in your fridge, and your family happy. And then as well as your business, th at least three months of an emergency fund for your business. That way, if the shit hits the fan and you're hurt, not only will you be able to continually to pay yourself a salary if you have enough put away, but you can also just make sure that your studio is set up. And again, if you have your personal emergency fund set aside, then you don't need to worry about paying yourself a salary if you can't afford to. And that's how it works. If you can afford to pay yourself a salary, then continue paying yourself a salary. If you have employees working for you, then you're in a different, you know, I guess, uh, genre or whatever. I'm trying to think of the, the classifications. But you're not just an individual sole proprietor. You have a business, a corporation kind of set up. So anyways, before I get long-winded here and carry on, Enjoy. Again, any questions, comments, or concerns, or any insights or feedback on this episode in particular, please hit me up. Info at wiseguyradio.com. You can find this episode at wiseguymedia.com forward slash 103. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Peace. This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by The Flow Magazine. Since its inception, the focus of The Flow has been to provide a bond among members of the lampworking community. In every issue, you can enjoy great content with the hottest artists and cutting-edge techniques using the latest industry products. These features, along with the continuation of our Women in Glass edition, Glass Craft Emergent Artist Awards, inspiring gallery showcases, dynamic general interest articles, as well as health and safety information, make The Flow the leading international lampworking journal. For more information or to subscribe to The Flow, go to theflowmagazine.com. That's theflowmagazine.com. This episode is also brought to you by C-Cube Co., C-Cube now creates a wide range of specialty and one-of-a-kind artistic glassware. Items such as hand-blown wine crafts, insulated coffee mugs, pint glasses, and custom piggy banks that you can have personalized with imprinting logos and color accents that are available. Just go to C-Cube Co. That's S-E-A-C-U-B-E-C-O dot com for more information. That's C-Cube Co. dot com.
Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. If you have any questions, comments, or remarks, please leave them in the show notes page area where it says comments. We'll see you soon. Have a wise night. Thank you.